show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests bring you insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for soul growth. Come journey with us through astrology's energetic cycles and get ready to understand your path in the cosmic roots of the stars. I host Talk Cosmos with insightful conversations to awaken soul consciousness. And today is January 21st, a day that many have thought was going to be a utopian energy, but it is so subtle and so real to be connecting us because Pluto, that way out planet, little tiny dwarf planet, but power. Can't pick anything by size. Actually, the master of a whole set of dwarf planets just past Neptune has shifted its transit. This is astrology talk from Capricorn since for 18 years, since 2008, into Aquarius again, the sign of brotherhood, we think, the network, the common liked minded people that 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 we can work with in, in, as a team. And we'll talk a lot more about this. In fact, the whole, for weeks, various shows and our show is really looking at this from so many angles. Today, I have a wonderful special guest that lives here in Kailua Kona with myself, as it turns out, and internationally known, a luminary and master energy healer. And we'll talk about that too in just a moment as I introduce her. Callie cares. And it, the point, just to tie this together, because she is a quantum energy regenerative healer, and our subject today is regeneration because of linking her energies with this Aquarian energy of consciousness with Pluto. But just to share that it's an intuitive sign, Aquarius, that may be not so always focused upon, but it's very important to realize because like that energy, that flash of, of lightning that bolts out of the sky, we, we see something and then it, it's gone, but yet it's that sense of an intuition, that fire that comes forth to us and wants to renew humanity. And it's revolutionary. It's a focus to elevate our conditions, our human conditions. So we are... Now ready to introduce Callie Cares. I keep thinking we have an automated uh, announcement, but I guess, do we, Nate, do we have an automated announcement? No. Okay. Because this is once a month. Callie, hello. <laughs> Aloha, Sue. And I love, I'm so happy to be here. And I love how the stars brought us together so synchronistically and and especially how we've landed on this special day together and all of the things that is just perfectly aligned. It is synchronistic. It is so true. It's like the universe keeps replicating these real life scenarios because I met Kari here, Kali, not Kari, Kali here and in a certain circumstance. And then we began talking and it was meant to be. So, I, if I can have the slides up, Nate, very good. Thank you. Callie is an international luminary, a master intuitive energy healer, a core belief engineer. She's founded, the founder of Life Enhancement Hawaii and Ascension Healing Academy. She's dedicated to helping people heal and tap into their number one innate asset, intuition. I totally am so thrilled of that focus and reality of truth. Callie's client says she's a force of nature in the world of personal development. And you have an opportunity we will show further that starting February 2nd to 10th, it just opened, that, that there's a wonderful retreat opportunity. Although, as it says here too, that will be in April and continuing throughout the year. She had a miraculous healing that I'll be glad to really hear more about when she overcame paralysis 
and dedicated her life to holistic transformation. For 25 years, she has merged consciousness, neuroscience, and healing energetics to train tens of thousands of people for their mind, body, spirit to rise up, just like Aquarius, up into the next level because change is inevitable and Callie connects her clients to navigate their inner compass to ever-changing world. So thank you very much. It is great to have you. This is going to be on a new league because often we started off with a lot of archetypal thinking. This is myself here. Uh, for those folks, I am the founder of these insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for soul growth. This is our seventh season. We started in yeah, uh, 2018, so it's very exciting. Well, let's start, Callie, because as you had shared with this, on January 22nd, which is tomorrow, is the anniversary where you were shot and told that you were paralyzed. You're right. You're right. And uh, that hope happened many years ago when I was in university and I had a miraculous healing uh, when they said the bullet was in my spine. At that moment, when I was lying in the hospital, I claimed and said there was no other thing that I was going to do except for a walk again. I claimed my destiny. And as you have up on the slide, a big part of the story. So that's that that story has actually been featured with Lisa Nichols from the movie The Secret and Neil Donald Walsh and became a best-selling author over a decade ago. But really the big part of the story, and that is what I do with my clients, is the fact that I intuitively knew when the shooter shot me and then I talked him out of shooting me again and talked him out of talk, uh, shooting himself in front of me. He said, well, if I'm going to leave you here, I'm going to leave you here with nothing to live for. And I knew instantaneously that that meant that he was going to go kill my family. So I did everything in my power, including driving my car with my hands because I was paralyzed from the waist down. I didn't even know where the bullet was embedded in me. I didn't know. All I knew is that there was blood. I couldn't move. I couldn't feel my legs. Um, you know, so I was just, you know, I couldn't see behind me. So I didn't know what I was dealing with. But I did know that I had the opportunity to save lives. And so, and I did, mm -hmm. luckily, I, the, the police had them out of the home and the police were waiting there when he arrived. So um, their lives were saved. And I feel like I've saved so many more lives since I've been teaching intuition because no, it may, obviously it's not as vast and, and drama, trauma as, as this situation. However, helping people navigate through some really big stuff and dealing with the traumas and dealing with um, pivoting in this ever-changing world. And when we tap in and we listen, really the world is our oyster and we can make the best decisions for ourselves. It's beautifully truthful. It truly is. I think so often we're trained and we're leaving this just to go astrologically, this Capricorn time where we're masters. And of course, how do you learn to be a master is by following what the trainings are. But when it steers us away where we're really following and not leading with our inner core, we get lost. We're not there. It's not authentic. And it's a real process to to hear and to listen and what how to listen it's not part of our society to 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 train ourselves to well jiminy cricket would say you know listen to yourself <laughs> in pinocchio right <laughs> yeah. right exactly and i wanted to say something too about what you said earlier you were talking about that like energy in the sky and you know as an <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> That's a, yes. Um, so 30 years ago when this happened, 
I wasn't an energy healer at that time. I was actually in university to become a police officer to put bad guys in jail. That's actually because I grew up in a very dysfunctional family and there was a lot of um, things that just really inspired me uh, to take action in the world. I didn't, I thought that it was going to be as a police officer, but it then worked out as an energy worker, which I've actually been able to help tens of thousands of people this way. And um, so, uh, but what I wanted to say was when my healing happened, it was instantaneously. And it was like something came out of the sky. Like I describe it as a lightning bolt, even though it was a blue sky and not a cloud in the sky. It was literally like, just like, and instantaneous healing. And so that was my experience. So I don't know where Pluto was in that. I don't even know. It would be interesting actually to find out from you what the stars were doing on that day way back. And um, we'll can, talk about that. Can we take away the slides, Nate? I, I left a message. I want to just see Callie because we're going to talk. We can do that. Oh, well. Any rate, you know, what year was it? That was actually in 1990. Oh. Okay, 1990. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 1990. Okay. Uh, um, it was yeah. in, it was, Pluto was in Scorpio, and you have a Scorpio moon. So this is deeply, a, we're talking about Pluto, which we will in a bit. And I guess I could have jumped right now into the slides that I asked to have taken away <laughs> because, but yeah. we'll go back to those. Pluto right now. <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> See, Talk you just it. asked in it and it's and it's done. You're That's a powerful, it. powerful woman. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Indeed. And okay. great help in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so here, Pluto is the depth of soul transformation. It because in mythology, Hades, which was the Greek, and in um in, in Roman, it's called Pluto. It's the god of the underworld. They had Mount Olympus was the tallest mountain. And it, that's a sanctuary for the gods. And there's a lot of mythology. And this is not a mythology session here, although I do dearly love it. But the point is, is that if, if it represents the idea of our spirit ever living, that the spirit remains, we're incarnated in this lifetime. But when you, that the, the soul returns to be regenerated. And, and we experience that during our lifetime. It's a metamorphosis, it's transmutive. I mean, if we looked at a butterfly, it actually dissolves its body and then it rebirths. But for you, and we come in, this is, I mean, here I'm touting my own philosophies of this, which I think are very similar with yours, is that we come into this world with a menu list, you might say, of, of what steps. And it's not always a conscious thing. It is for some folks. They realize it more. But this, we must change. As you said, change is inevitable. So for yourself, Pluto, um, with no more said, it, it, you have this ability to tell stories and help transform people you know, to share. It's not just for you, but it's a gift that people can relate to that is really remarkable. So that's as much as... You're absolutely right. And I'll add the fact that I didn't even tell my personal story until Jack Canfield convinced me. He took, took two conversations with him, him calling me and saying, Callie, you really need to share your story. I was doing energy work with celebrities and everything like that um, for years and not telling anybody. And before the book came out 10 years oh. ago, I actually had to call up my best friends and say, I have something to tell you. And they're like, What? what you have known you all these years and you never told us and i'm like yeah you know and so and that's actually part of part of healing is is the fact that a lot of us including myself are trained to protect our villains 
and have a lot of shame and guilt around things that have happened to us because there's that false thing that if something bad that's happened to you, it's because you're a bad person. And I didn't want people to think anything bad about me because I knew that I had a good heart and I, I was worried about people judging me. And so luckily I had incredible coaches and healers to work on it for me so that I could stand into my own power and stand on my story and not in my story and be able mm -hmm. to hear my story to help the tens of thousands, probably over hundreds of thousands of people um, with having the the book out there and all the public speaking and all the all the uh, work that I've done publicly. I'm sure that it's way up there now. And but I on, personally, I know that I've worked with tens of thousands of people over the last 20 some years. And it is so important to be able to stand on our story and also to have the, so I had that miraculous healing physically, but I still had to do the emotional work. There was a lot of emotional work that needed to be cleared and that, and you know, and that's how I got my repertoire because as I healed myself, I became a better healer myself as well as I was working on myself and then taking another course and another thing and took all of these things from breath work to the energy work to NLP and hypnotherapy and core belief engineering. And it, the gam, it just goes on and on and on and on, but it was to help myself. And then luckily all my clients get to benefit from it as well. Oh yes. That is so chironic. That is exactly it. The master healer heals themselves. So by ending one whole phase, transforming and coming into the next. And you know, I was thinking when you said about speaking, it's, it's, I, in writing a book, I often hear that write from the wound, not the scar. Have you heard that? Yeah. yeah. So really you, you did. It was like you were, as you were saying, as you were in it, but you needed to, to heal it but also i'm thinking that that blame situation that is so prevalent with fear the fear of it isn't that partly because we haven't okay when we talk about intuition there is a third party and however we want to express it this is this amazing life force that we have within us that we're part of if you want to talk about that, is it because? Yes, it's absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned that earlier, and I, I am 100% on board with you that we are spiritual beings having a human experience here on earth. And with having that human experience, we are given challenges in our life, and some are more dramatic than others. And, and we also have personal choice. But when we connect to our intuition and to like, I don't know if it's some little, some even Boy Scouts and, and um, the Scouts are taught this, this little light of mine, I want to let it shine. And it's about protecting our own light, which mm -hmm. I refer to as our spirit within us. And when we connect with that spirit within us, then we are able to remember who we are. And that's my job. My job that as, as a healer and a coach and all the work that I do with my clients is to remind people how powerful they are, that we are made in the likeliness, like in the likeliness of God. What doesn't matter what holy book that you read. Yeah. It doesn't matter what holy book, whether it's the Bible, court, like it doesn't matter. All of them talk about us being made in the likeliness of God. And that when we connect to that power within us, we can hone in to that and miracles can happen. Now, I was very blessed to be able to have had an instantaneous healing. And I truly believe that it has, it was what helped me and i learned just so you know i learned visualization before the secret was out i actually learned it from my basketball coaches back in high school to see the ball in the basket before oh, it hit yeah. before it left my hand and for me to be and he was my basketball coach I had great basketball coaches but one of them was a nfl 
um, um, mm. uh, ring, win ring, uh, ring winner. And in Canada, it's the Grey Cup, but he was NFL, which is the other one. I know. Yes, yes, yes. I know. And, and NFL Bowl. is good. The Super Bowl. Yeah. So he was a Super Bowl ring winner. So they learned visualization. Wow. And as being an athlete, um, I really, you know, for years learned visualization. So that's what I did. I literally choose, chose to claim my life. And I've done that ever since. And then that's now what I get to help others do as well. It's like, are we going to be the victim to circumstances? And I'm not saying that every single person who is who has a spinal injury right. can heal from it. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that we can claim our life and how we're going to live it. It may not be. It may not be that you will overcome the paralysis. However, you could overcome all the emotional baggage that's with it and the stink that I call of the backpack with all the crap in it. And, um, and for me, I know that um, we're helping clients see their belief systems that they did don't even realize that they're carrying. And that's huge. So many people don't understand what the tapes are that are going into their mind that are playing 24 seven and are stopping them from claiming their life to the fullest potential. And that is where I just love what I do to see the transformation, to see people's eyes light up and to do it in a loving container and especially doing it in a container here in Hawaii where it's like so powerful and transformative. And um, that's, you know, that's like for me next level to be here. And would you like me to share the story of how my intuition got me here? Please. Yes. Okay. So holding into intuition and teaching other people intuition, I really follow this, the guides that the guide of my intuition. And back in October of 2019, that's five months before um, actually anybody knew about COVID, anybody knew about a pandemic, anybody knew about a lockdown, I heard a clear message of, Callie, the world is going to shut down and you need to get to Hawaii. Mm. And I just went, what? And I, and I sat with that and I kind of went, oh, is it an asteroid coming? Like I was thinking, okay, are we going to be off the grid? Mm. Or I need some food. And I got, no, nope, it's not that. It's not a natural disaster. I went, so I, I meditated some more on it and really tapped in and I got, just get to Hawaii and you'll see. It's like nothing that you've ever experienced before. So that was October of 2019. I landed here in Hawaii in December of 2019. And as we all know, in February and March, the big lockdowns happened and I was here. And then that's when I applied with immigration as a Canadian, applied with immigration. Mm to expand my retreats that I've done in on Salt Spring Island, which is like the place to be, which is actually the Hawaiian Island of Canada. And, um, and I've done it uh, throughout British Columbia and Alberta and all of these retreats that I've been doing uh, to expand here to the place where I've always wanted to be. Because since I was a little girl, a preteen, the first time I came here with my mom, I said to her, you know, mom, why are we leaving? And she's like, because we're Canadian, we can't stay. And I'm like, but uncle has a place here. He And she's like, well, he's a travel agent. And I'm like, well, I want to be a travel agent. And I'm like, actually, I don't want to be a travel agent. I just want to have a business here. So years later, after doing all of the work that I've done with the celebrities in Hollywood with North, which is Vancouver, and with, and with um, corporate clients and individual clients and all the work that I've done, I then am here in Hawaii um, really honing in on the powerful mana, which means energy in Hawaii, in Hawaiian language, the powerful Hawaiian uh, mana to help transformation, which I feel is so supportive because for me, when I'm here, that's my power spot. It's literally when I'm in Hawaii, uh, and I'm sure you, uh, yeah, I saw I've, you, right? I've read that actually 
Hawaii is becoming the solar plexus of the world. If we looked at it, it used to be that Tibet was the Kundalini, but now it's turned to be Patagonia in Chile is the, ah, and Chile. I can't relate what book it was, but it was, it seems so powerful in how some things connect and that Hawaii, we are the most remote spot. And, and as we, I was just noticing a, a friend, one of the, another uh, astrologer panelists here, Justin Crockett Elsie showed that the, the Hawaiian islands, like this great island, the big island that we're on, is actually 33,000 feet from the floor of the ocean up to the top. Mauna Kea is 13,000 some, which is not that much. I mean, it's right up there. Mount Rainier is 14. And I think in Alaska has, well, Mount Everest is 28, I think. But this is actually bigger if it goes from the floor. What I'm talking about is, Yes, we are pretty special here in Hawaii. Yes, in I, you know, I have, yes exactly. And I, you're 100% right. And I've traveled the world. I've been to Patagonia. I've been through, like, I've been all through Europe. I've been to Australia. I've been to all these places. Nothing. There's beautiful places, and but there's nothing that I have experienced in any other place like here in Hawaii. And actually, the next retreat that I'm uh, doing here in February, which is just a, just a few weeks away, um, and there's still spots available there, um, it's at Kealakekua. And Kealakekua means mm -hmm. pathway to the gods. And it's where the sacred ceremonies have been done by the kahunas, who are the spiritual leaders from all of the islands, have come they would travel in their in their canoes from all of the islands to come to that exact spot at Kealakekua, mm. pathway to the gods, to do sacred ceremony. There is a vortex there that is quantum over the moon, out out there in the cosmos. Incredible, and I have seen such incredible manifestations happen there and transformation. And I would, I would literally just say that it is a holy spot. It is so holy and it is powerful and quantum leaps of transformation happen there. Thank you, Callie. This is actually right at the time. This is a quite a reshift. We often do this right after the break, but this is perfect and we can return to it because this is at the half hour and it's much more to explore in this whole consciousness. It's all shifting this quantum leap from the form to the connective mental intuitive. So return with us, folks. This is January 21st with Hallie Cares on Top Cosmos. We'll be right back. Thank you. we take a break from this week's edition of Talk Cosmos, let's take a look at this cycle's archetype. We are currently in the Yang period of Aquarius, ruled modernly by Uranus and Saturn in traditional astrology by the ancients. By leaving a cycle based on governing structures through both man-made and universal laws, Aquarius breaks established patterns, permitting the energy of freedom just as its ruling planet Uranus spins on its side and orbits backwards. As a fixed air sign represented by the water bearer pouring the spirit of cosmic energy, Aquarius seeks to find like-minded, intuitively aligned souls to connect in social groups for the elevation and improvement of all. This is Martha Norwalk. Every Sunday morning, beginning at 9 a.m., thanks in part to the Ananda Institute of Living Yoga, we cover the world of animals. This week, it's best, Neuroenergetic Balancing, Rasmussen Reset, and Energy Code Sunday. Dr. Nels Rasmussen and Sister Linda Rasmussen join us, and together they can help you or your animal friends with emotional, behavioral, or physical issues. Martha Norwalk's Animal World, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to noon, right here on Alternative Talk, a.m. 1150. Talk Cosmos brings insightful conversations to awaken consciousness for the soul growth with hour-long programs every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific on KKNW. 
Talk Cosmos weekly programs are also available to watch live on the Talk Cosmos YouTube channel and Facebook page. While you're there, make sure you click the like and subscribe button so you get the full Talk Cosmos experience. Or if you'd rather listen to the show archives with audio only, the entire podcast collection since 2018 is available on most podcast carriers. And to find out about upcoming programs, sign up for the newsletter at TalkCosmos.com. So grab your coffee, tea, or kombucha and enjoy the show. Alternative Talk 1150, online at 1150kknw.com. We're back again, and we have a couple of things just to return about, because this is Pluto and Aquarius, as of yesterday, back to zero degrees Aquarius in this intuitive sign. There's so many things to share. We, we do share technically at this time what's happening. And I'll just briefly mention to our audience, remember that Kaleidoscope Visions is now on every fourth Sunday doing transit readings and the calendar's open. So sign up, go to Talk Cosmos and click on that little form and enter your name and I'll connect with you and we'll put you on the schedule. The next one will be next week, and we'll mention it again. And also, for a calendar, Top Cosmos on Spring Equinox, which happens actually on the 19th of March this year, will be working with East West Bookstore, which is familiar to the Seattle folks, and it's a part of Ananda, so it's everywhere, the yogi, um, um, Yogananda. And... It, it will have a two-hour special. It might be three hours. We're working on it. So just keep that in mind. It'll be really a wonderful situation. So right here, we're back with Callie Cares and your event, which will be on February 2nd. And we'll bring that up here. I'll just show this real quick again. Yeah. So if folks go into that, if you have any trouble, you can... Email Callie at Callie Cares at C A L L, like Lima, I E K, like I was gonna kangaroo. Yeah, I was gonna say like kangaroo, right? I love that. It's (laughs) dynamic, it jumps and and cares at dot com, or else her phone number is listed here too. And just it'll be marvelous, it'll be it's such a a, a, listen. And so, we'll talk more about that if we can I would love I would love to I would love to add the fact that it is whale season right now too in the winter time here the humpback whales we have um we have pilot whales and other other incredible fish and dolphin and uh, spinner dolphins that are here full time and bottlenose and all the incredible cetaceans here in Hawaii, but right now it's an extra special time with the humpback whales who I have a special intuitive connection with. Um, So I literally have been, again, into it. When you are connected into the real World Wide Web, not the one that is on the internet, not the internet one, but the real cosmic some people call it Akashic Records, other people, they have all different names for it. But to me, I call it the real world wide web. When you are in tune with yourself and into with your intuition, you can connect with anything. We all have it. You know, we think of how many times that we think of a friend and then all of a sudden the phone rings and they're on that. And they're on that. Yes. You know? Yeah. And so, so, I have been invited by the cetaceans, that's the dolphins and the whales, to connect with them. And I have been blessed that there are just just like ourselves, that there are healers in the human realm. There are healers in the cetacean realm. And they have activated me by putting their sonar and their sound healing in through me. So when I give activations, then it's like tuning into their frequency. And then people can then, when I give an activation, then they will connect with 
a dolphin or a whale energetically and be guided and connected with them and receive their transmissions. So it's very powerful. It's like quantum leaping. And, you know, there's so many shows that um, have shown that the whales have been, that were like literally from Star Trek and all these things and talk about they were going to save the world. I have to tell you the that, and, and it's like literally if you Google it, the whale saving the world. I mean, it has been on Star Trek. It's been on a whole bunch of different shows and stuff like that. But I really believe that there are um, incredible healing through the vibration and through the transmissions of sound, sound healing, the yes. sound of the whales. Edward when Casey said it, healing is through sounds and animals. Yes. Right, exactly. So I do sound healings, but I also, when I work through the sound healings, I'm actually channeling their quantum energy and putting it through. So anybody that has any kind of, of affinity to being a part of that or have wanted or it does already have a connection and want to have it deeper. I've taught so many people how to be able and in tune them into the frequency and then and healing to release the blockages in their physical body and mentally, emotionally, because we are holistic beings. And when you so when we have blocked energy, it's like a it's like a kink in our hose. And when you have that energetic um, flow again, like the ocean, like the way that they're swimming through the water, the way that they flow, um, and, and many of my clients talk about how they feel like after that shift, like they feel like they're in the flow and they are actually in the flow. Think synchronicities will just line up and job opportunities line up or they figure out because they're going through a transition in their life and they don't know, well, do I, do I, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? And then all of a sudden it just happens that they just, they get a download, they connect and get, receive their intuitive messages and be able to make the best choices for themselves. So I teach people how to fish not give them a fish. I could do intuitive readings all day long. And you know, at the beginning, when I'm working with somebody, I will help them and give them some intuitive um, guidance. But then uh, it's more important for me to actually teach them how to connect into their own intuitive guidance. And so that's a big part of, of working with me, whether it's remotely, or whether it's here in Hawaii. Um, and yeah, so I'm just that's to me, it's just incredible to be in Hawaii and to be in the warm weather, the beautiful ocean. Oh, it is, Callie. Yes. And I've been trying to, yes, indeed. Let's, I love all of this support because to me, visualization, what your act, life is, we need this relationship be like a, a mirror to just reflect or validate what it is that we're not seeing. And we have emotional patterns, it's so true, that come from protective elements, you know, of fears and whatnot. And, and to have them identified is freeing and releasing in a trusting, because a lot of it has to do about trust. We were going back to like this transformation energy that Pluto is. You know, there's a, when one's, a life and death, which is when one finishes a cycle, I mean, it, is, it does represent life and death. And in your case, it was very literate. But for pe people feeling the emotional part, when a whole ending is finishing, it feels like a death. And there's, so there's mistrust. And it's building that trust for oneself to hear oneself and to have a guide that can, yeah, allow you and nature too I think it's such a beautiful companionship that we have with learning how to use nature you know it's shamanic really it is it is and I have a shamanic background as well <laughs> and and it's about our true nature and I wanted to um 
connect that with the whole Pluto, what you were talking about before and transformation and about how now we are shifting into this place of in, instead of people really being focused on the me and then connecting to the we. And that is that is a part of the whole connecting into the real world wide web. But um, so that when we connect into it, we receive so much support. And all of a sudden you have a whole new support system around you with your intuition. And people are like, well, what do you mean? Like, how does that, my intuition bring in support? It's like, if you, whether people think of them as their guides, their angels, their, their, um, past, their loved ones that are passed on, it doesn't matter what it is. But when you are connected into the real World Wide Web, there is that support around you. I can't tell you exactly who it was or what it was that whispered in my ear that has told me so many things. Don't go down that road you know, and miss or, or, you know, because then find out there was an accident there later or, or the time that I, my boat was sinking and, you know, so many things that, that I've had experience in my life where I have been guided, really intuitively guided, you know, to make the best choices that are safe and incredibly powerful and empowered choices. So when we are focused on the we, especially when... Yes, I like that. Yeah, The because teamwork, of, the network, the community, the yes. just emphasis that is away just from our own reflection, which is important if we get to a point, but we weren't born as isolists or as hermits. We were born in a social environment. It, it, however we accept that you're right work with and of course your audience here today would be very spiritually minded people that would be watching an astrology you know watching you and everything like that and those are the people that i that i work with are people that believe truly believe that there is a higher power that they believe in the fact that we are spiritual beings having a human experience and are spiritually minded now it looks <laughs> for different people but I, I watch people evolve and make, get their connection to their spiritual like whether I'm working on them physically mentally we're working with their wealth or their health it doesn't matter but it all is the base as about their spiritual connection and and really really getting that strong spiritual connection, which I also believe is the connection to the real world wide web as well, which, you know, creator, God, um, spirit, whatever you want to call it, but which, which lives within us and we are it's, part of. Yes, indeed. This whole energy that's starting now with Aquarius, which is an air based rather than a form based because in astrology anyway, and in many metaphysical fields, perhaps, there's a action, which is cardinal, as we call it, where it's just a, like a fire, for instance, it moves, it just moves, it's cardinal. And other signs that are cardinal, that the motion, and then it settles into form and, and then it breaks away. So in other words, air this air form which is well I'm just yeah I kind of went around the corner because it's a fixed air sign <laughs> so it's like a form sign okay <laughs> Sorry about that. So, right. but the fact is is that because it's air it's connective and it's also that um this idea that that we are Okay, I'm getting lost here because I, I mean so many words. I'm trying to connect them all like intention. Anyway, go ahead. Yes. Can I can I help a little bit on that? Yes. So what I'm finding is the shifts in people's mindset around the fact that they have been wanting to 
to move themselves forward. And the social movement, especially since COVID, um, has been so strong about understanding how important the collective is, which again is back to the real World Wide Web. But the collective seeing us and wanting to help our brothers and sisters. Now, there's been a movement, you know, for as I mean, centuries. It's been written about and talked about and sung about and everything, and about bringing the world, you know, together in love. And and I really believe, though, this is what's happening with the with the Pluto going into Aquarius, where it's the transformation of people seeing that they're not isolated as a per just one person. That but when we are focused on on ourselves as part of the collective, then that's where the transformation comes and that seems like almost all of my clients are doing that right now um, whether it's in their career or their personal life they're looking for community they're looking for connection they're looking for Amazing. this yes and that's something we're, we're really blessed here in Hawaii because we call it we call it it doesn't matter if somebody has the um the physical blood in as a family, but we call each other Ohana, which means family. And so, and that's how we, we you know, our neighbors are a part of our Ohana. Our community um, at large is our Ohana. And so I really want that people to get that we are one world. We are one. We are literally you know, we're talking cosmos. So, you know, the cosmos, we are all one. We can't, we can't be here without us being working together. And that is what is so important right now, coming and yes. working together. Learning to do teamwork and yet have that individuality. It's, 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 a, it's a matrix and it's a juggle, but it's more of centering within which is what you're recognizing to have that as our like sonar, like a whale, you know, going out because really what does a whale do it? It, or dolphins, they project out and they get, they hear back, you know, how are, is it hearing and they navigate. I swam once with, I was fortunate down here in Hawaii, South, South of the Bay at the a national park. And I can't say the words, but I, know. I saw people out there two step. Is it two step? And, <laughs> yeah, and there was a bunch of people. So I went out by myself. I was with other folks, but they didn't want to go out. So I was like, okay, I'm going out. <laughs> the dolphins swam around me, probably about a perimeter, about eight, 10 feet at the most, eight feet circling around me. And I just laid there. It was like being held like a like suspended, just this, this, the, the, the embodied trust. I knew that it was changing. I didn't know how I would change, but I knew this was a new direction. Yeah. It's transformative. Absolutely. And their energy is incredible. And again, it's like here in human, in, in our human society, there are people that are healers and there's people that are just regular people. And then there's, you know, there's people that are not so not following the light. And there's the same in the cetacean nation that there are the healing dolphins and whales that want to commune with you. And of course we have to follow the rules and, you know, um, because there are rules in place and everything like that, but they can actually communicate thousands of miles away from each other there. They literally, and I don't know if you know this, but, um, th and this is pretty incredible when the whales come back at the, in the beginning of winter, the dolphins travel out two days out to go pick them up and escort them in to celebrate their return. I know. Oh my gosh. I've got goosebumps. I know. So the connection of all of that. And then when you're mm -hmm. intuitively connected to that, which, you know, my clients are, especially like after coming to the retreats, they feel they're like, oh, something's going on with the dolphins. They're all joyful and everything like that. And then I'm like, check your calendar. That's that's probably their the return of the, the whales. And it's the same thing. They escort them when they leave in the spring and um, to go back up to um, Alaska. And did you know that they don't feed the whole time that they're here, that they're here? They're here mm -hmm. to give 
birth and they're here to mate and they're here to, to rear their, their young that they, they just were birthed, which I really truly believe as this being a birthing place, that it is the energy of rebirthing the new earth. Hence, actually, part of my um, the Ascension Healing Academy, I have the two humpback whales around the flower of life there because of the fact that they are bringing, this is the spot that they come to give birth to the, like, they don't do it, like, they they do it here. This is where they do it. Yeah, not down in Mexico <laughs> or anywhere else. They, they travel that distance. Yeah, yeah, the ones that are here are giving birth here. They don't do it while they're in Alaska, right? So it's really that energy that is in the waters, that is in the field here, the energy field. And this is about us rebirthing ourselves, going to the next level to, of ascension and healing ourselves so that we can ascend. And so bringing that all together, the quantum codes, um, you know, now with the energy of Pluto and Aquarius, of uh, the whole transformation and collectively coming so that we can ascend as a collective, each person doing their individual work so that collectively we can come together up and ascend and remember who we are, the spiritual beings having a human experience here on earth together in love and light. It's such a gift. If you think about the, okay, there's ads that say, well, you have this and this, but when you add them together, then there's no, you can't measure it. And that's what life is. It's just like a child, you know, a man and woman or people have a child. That person is like totally new and different or, or a cre any creative, uh, creative thing. And there's a life force by just, this whole factor of people being there aligned with what their purposeful works for their heart, as we know, and, and sharing that with others in You're that as it yeah. works, you know, in the collective, because there's a magnetic ability. And that's also very much with Scorpio and with Pluto, and it's called these things. But to me, that's really... The essence is that there is, if we can trust and learn to recognize that something's showing up, it may not be exactly as we envisioned it, because what do we know in the first place? We didn't know what would come up. So we have to be open. And when it does pop up, to realize that that our, how we feel and intend is magnetically attracting it. That's what, you know, Venus is attraction and Neptune. Exactly. Okay. And I wanted to add that to, to me, one and one does not make two. It makes 11. When you bring one and one together, it makes 11. So one and one is 11. So when, and you know, it's talked about in the Bible and other holy books that when you, two people come together in his name or like with a divine purpose, right? Then it will always come to fruition. And that's, that's why working with, with an energy healer, Rather, you know, working on ourselves is, is good, but it's the slow path. When you work with somebody else, all of a sudden it's work. You're going to work 11 times faster than by yourself. Oh, so, yes. So it, there's, there's again, a purpose why we are, well, all of life is works with each other. Again, back to the me versus the we. We are connected in, in and there's a trust. There's a certain part that one just needs to suspend judgment and go, okay, wait and see. And, yes. and they'll find out themselves. It, it yes. really Can I add some whale? I know we only have a little bit left. Can I add some whale wisdom, more whale wisdom? Please. Okay. Yes. So we talked about the sound healing and how powerful that is. The other thing is breath. And just think about a, about a whale or a dolphin, about how they, they can hold the, like they breathe. And then when they let go, how powerful their breath is. And, you know, they leave that big balloon that can be seen from miles away, miles away, right? This huge balloon. So breath work is so important. So, and, you know, and so. Hawaii means that, huh? Why e It's the divine breath of life. Absolutely. And aloha is the breath 
is the like you are you are the gift of breath of gift of life aloha so i'm i'm gifting you life the ha right so ha. so that's so breath work is so vitally important and so can help you centered and release stress so you know not everybody um today will be that's listening to the whether that's live or the replay will be working with me but i want people to know how important it is to have sound healing and to do breath work it is so free like it is so important the other part is and this is this is may sound controversial in a little bit but i um but i want to say that i mentioned earlier that uh, great music <laughs> yeah, go ahead. We have a moment. Yes, go, please. Okay. The other part is the fact that when, as a collective, that at, in pods of dolphins and pods of whales, and that they, if somebody is not contributing to the greater good of the pod, they are actually left out of the pod. And we need to use our discernment because the weakest link discernment is the people and that's pluto i thank you so much because it's like a glacier it purges and i think realizing and allowing and using it, it we're in a process so these are tools and very vital this is I, i've got goosebumps again. thank you so much much aloha to you to our audience thank you Thank you for joining an insightful conversation on Talk Cosmos, the show where Sue Rose Minahan and her panel of guests awaken consciousness by connecting soul growth patterns with astrology's energetic cycles. Be sure to tune in next Sunday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, to continue your journey through the roots of the cosmic pathway.